test. Okay, um, so here's today's plan. Today uh, we'll finish um, the analysis of uh, uh, mini batch SGD. Uh, however, so I just got my vaccine yesterday and I'm like, you know, having headache right now. <laughs> so, you know, if I'm saying something nonsensical, uh, please pardon. Where's my Apple Pencil? Okay, here we go. Um, so um, today we'll continue to learn mini batch SGD. Uh, let me reiterate the idea. The idea is we find the balance of gradient descent and the stochastic gradient descent. Stochastic gradient descent is we basically, we use just one sample's gradient to update our neural network, okay? And uh, uh, the gradient descent is like, we use all the samples average gradient to update the neural network. And the mini batch is somewhere between. And normally the batch size, I think I forgot to mention here, the batch size, so usually, did I mention? Okay, I didn't. So the size, the mini batch size with mini batch size uh, B is normally like much less than our number of total data. Uh, for example, uh, if we have, for example, for our MNIST, in, for, uh, for our in-class competition, we have, um, I think we have uh, 40,000 training samples and we have uh, 30,000 test samples. So which, we'll in, so which we'll introduce later today, some of uh, the things. Um, then a normally good number is like, uh, uh, for example, from 32, 64, 128, these kind of things. So we're, we're, we don't choose mini batch like uh, 10,000, like a batch. It, we don't do that, okay. Um, the, like I said earlier, the assumption is the distribution of the sample the data do not differ much from the overall data. This is a philosophy, okay. So for our um, gradient descent, sorry, stochastic gradient descent. And so let's review mini batch. The mini batch is we choose a subset so this subset is a random sample. So it's random sam random sampled subset of like all the data, okay? And uh, the mini batch size is B. So we basically, we randomly choose, um, for example, 32 samples. And normally this uh, sampling is without replacement, so no replacement. It means in one epoch, so uh, I think, let me put a remark somewhere. Let me move this uh, down a little bit. So this is the last time's notes. So let me put a remark here. The remark here, the random sampling is without replacement. So the random sampling is without replacement. 
So what does without replacement mean? It means in one epoch. So one epoch just means all the all the sample have been used. So in one uh, epoch, the same data point. So it does not do gradient descent twice. Okay. So it's like we use one sample and we throw it away. And then we just uh, uh, we just sampled in like the rest samples. For example, if we have 10 sample and we have used one, two, and the nine uh, in our first batch, then one, two, and the nine are thrown thrown away, and uh, we we sample our data like in the rest pool. All right. So that that's uh, that's uh, the random sampling mean. So this is. Uh, And uh, um, again, we compute uh, an error equation. So, and this is nothing but, we just insert. So for example, uh, we start from here and we insert the best possible neural network on both sides, which is this, okay? So this is uh, again, um, So this is our best possible neural network and it's a local minimum of our uh, loss function. Um, and then we insert this because uh, at local minimum, the gradient is zero. If we assume our, um, if we assume our loss function is smooth, even though sometimes it's not smooth, but uh, we assume it's smooth. And then we insert, so we insert this and let's review what is, uh, what is this uh, F right here? I think it has this N right here. Okay, so this is our loss function. It's like an average of element wise loss. And if we see this term, this is like, uh, we compare each sample in this mini batch with the overall sample, like the average loss, okay? Because this is independent with I and uh, this term actually become this term. Okay, so. Uh, I think, I think this is, this is not a very good representation. So let me. Uh, move this notes a little bit further down. Okay. So in this step, we insert this term. This term is the overall average gradient. It's like we're doing a gradient descent. Um, and if we look at this term, this term has nothing to do with I. It means it has nothing to do with the batch um, we sampled. This is like uh, we add this, uh, B times and then divided by B. So it's it's actually the same thing, which reduces to this term. So let me use a, a box. Okay, so which is uh, this the same term. And this line, okay. The equation on this line is just gradient descent, okay? So as we can see, we can remove these two terms. This is the next, next, next iteration, current iteration, subtract loading rate, and this is current gradient. This is zero, okay? So this line is just gradient descent. And we have analyzed before, so which in lecture eight, uh, notes and now the key is to analyze this term. So, and this is our our goal today. So, uh, 
All right. So uh, we, we make a notation. So to do this, we denote delta i by um, So this is a current uh, neural network gradient at i's samples and subtract the overall uh, gradient. Okay. If our samples, if our samples are fixed, uh, this term is random. Uh, this term is not. Okay. So now we take. So now we take the L two norm. Um, on both sides, and we use cauchy schwarz inequality. So, and we have, uh, so we square, so we take the square L2 norm. So we have, this is uh, WK plus one, subtract W star square expectation equals the expectation of WK subtract W star subtract uh, alpha K, so right, here, the first term we have analyzed. The first two terms we have analyzed in uh, gradient descent and because, so sorry, this is less than or equal to, and then plus, so this is alpha k square expectation of uh, one over B. So here we just do, um, we just do like a fixed mini batch. So the batch size is like fixed and it is B. And we have, this is, sorry, it's not expectation. It's a sum of I in, I think this is BK. So um, I in BK of gradient f of i evaluated at so gradient of f of i evaluated at current neural network this is for i sample in this batch and this is overall gradient for uh, all the sample we have so this is this is our area question and if we use this notation, okay, we use this notation and we'll see that this term is just delta i, okay. And now we just focus on this term. So focus, we focus on the delta i term. So, um, I mean, if if we write it using, uh, so let's without without considering this learning rate, let's just consider um, so let's just consider uh, expectation of uh, one over B I in BK um, F of I WK gradient of F WK sorry this is WK WK okay so this equals, so we rewrite it as, <clears throat> this is uh, um, one over B, I in B, K, this uh, um, delta I square. And now we introduce we introduce a new random variable, 
to represent this uh, sum within uh, the mini batch as the sum of overall uh, the sample. So we introduce a random variable. So we introduce uh, beta i. Let, let, let's in introduce beta j. So just to be different from the i we have used. So we introduce uh, uh, this beta j. So what does beta j means is beta j is just a Bernoulli random variable. It's one if uh, j sample is in uh, batch k. Okay, so it is our in our current mini batch. So uh, if j sample is, is not sampled, um, then it is uh, um, so then it is zero. Okay. And now what we can do is if we uh, introduce if we introduce this random variable, uh, what happens is whoops, sorry. Uh, what happens is we can rewrite we can rewrite this sum only in the mini batch as a sum of uh, of all of all samples Because if, if the ith sample is in the mini batch, this is gonna be one. And then we have this delta i term. But if it's not, it's zero. So we recover this term. And this is a typical trick, I think uh, in uh, statistics, but I'm not a very good statistician. And uh, um, so this is a common trick when we are doing this a sum of iid random variable. So it's a common trick and uh, and now we're gonna do the sum. So that is, uh, um, oops. So that is, uh, we do the quadratic formula. So first we have one over B square. Uh, let, let, let's pull out this term since it's a constant. So, uh, and the expectation of, uh, um, Okay. okay, dot product. Right now we're using uh, the definition of, uh, um, of this L2 term. And then we use the summation formula that is, uh, um, so the summation of, uh, of AI square, it's uh, nothing but, uh, you know, we just sum up every term. So it's, uh, Let's say i from i to n, so it's i from one to n, j from one to n, a i a j. If uh, um, this is pretty much like uh, a, um, how do we say, a, a bilinear form with a matrix of this uh, all uh, like ones, okay. So uh, it's, uh, we get this quadratic form and um, when, so now, Let's uh, discuss. So we can rewrite this. It's essentially, it's like a long uh, quadratic formula. So um, how do I say it? So it's um, so beta i, beta j, delta i, delta j. All right. And uh, um, and the reason, oh, sorry, this is beta j, my bad. The reason we're doing this is because we want to use, uh, um, like, uh, for example, so uh, so here is a simple probability exercise. Um, so the reason we want to do this is we want to use um, the expectation of uh, 
like a IID Bernoulli random variable. So for example, um, so expectation of beta i squared. So let, let, let's first do beta i, okay? So expectation of beta i um, is basically the probability of the i sample being uh, sampled, right? Um, so it's essentially is the probability of i in this uh, b of k, okay, times one, and then probability of i is not in this b of k times zero. So um, we 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 just use uh, uh, some like a probability one hundred one, and we see that. Um, this is, for example, because our random sample has like batch size B, it means if we random sample, there is B over N chance that uh, it got selected, okay? So we have this and we can easily verify if we have the same beta i multiply itself together, it's uh, b over n as well. It's because um, this probability does not really change. What, what's changed is this. Uh, so we, when we compute the expectation of this one, we just change this to square square. So, um, so the average of this random variable remains same, remain the same. The only difference is this random variable. That is uh, the expectation of beta i times beta j. All right. So it's it's one only if i and the j are both sampled. So that's a trick. Okay. So i and j are all in this batch. Okay. So that means it's uh, uh, I in this batch, K and J in this batch, K, okay. So this is a typical like Bayesian probability exercise. And uh, it is like, we use this uh, Bayesian conditional probability formula which is, uh, we have this is i in this batch k times, given this i in batch k, and j in batch k, okay. So this is, this is a conditional probability formula that is, uh, that is this. So we just we just use this conditional uh, probability formula, but uh, uh, we multiply this uh, base probability to the left, and we get this uh, uh, and situation probability. So it's it's this guy, and uh, um, so only only when they are both in BK, its value is one. So it's essentially its expectation is this probability, and if we compute this because we are sampling without. Um, so actually let, let, us, uh, let us move all these uh, here and, uh, and let me use a new page to continue the notes. So here we have to use uh, uh, what we, our assumption earlier, that is sample without replacement. So it means if that, that if one sample is used, uh, we, we don't withdraw it away, uh, which is here. So uh, 
For example, the first probability is uh, b over n. The second probability is because if we have sampled this i sample, uh, when we sample j, it's like one less sample. So, and uh, there is one less like seats in this ba batch. So we have uh, we have this, and this is the expectation of bi uh, times bj. Okay, and then uh, now we back. So let's name this a star. So now we back to star. Um, basically, we just uh, uh, wrap up like uh, using this, uh, using this uh, make. So we make use of these two formula, which is this one and this one. So we rewrite uh, star as, we rewrite star as, uh, um, so sum of uh, so sum of i is not j, okay, beta i beta j, and delta i dot product with delta j plus i from one to n and uh, uh, beta i square delta i square. All right. So if we think about, uh, if we think about this, so this expectation is like, um, so this expectation can be like taken like two folds. What does that mean is this expectation can be taken as, uh, so I'm not sure um, all of us have learned this trick or all of us have learned like advanced probability, um, but this trick is, uh, um, is we isolate is we isolate the randomness for example if we have two random variable and we want to compute the expectation of uh, uh, of both this is like uh, um, sorry my bad so I think this is like given delta i then we do this, okay. So we compute the expectation of the inner one. And, uh, um, and then we compute the expectation of the outer one. So if we do this, we'll get uh, one over B. So E and the randomness is with respect, still with respect to the same sampling is we just decouple the randomness a bit. And uh, then we have this uh, sum, i is not j, b times b minus one, n times n minus one, delta i dot with delta i. And keep this in mind, this is like a, like a vector that has the same dimension with wk. So we just use um, this dot product to uh, denote matrix product. And then this is, so um, plus, um, plus, so we have sum divided by N and uh, uh, delta i square. Okay. So now we have this formula and we're gonna make a few uh, changes. That is, uh, for example, we have 
a B here and B here, B here. So B can be canceled. So a copy of B can be canceled and the copy of N can be pulled out. So what we have is B times N expectation with respect to the I samples gradient. Uh, we have, this is uh, I is not J and B got canceled. So what's left is B minus one and and n, n got pulled out, so n minus one delta i dot with delta j plus uh, sum of this, okay. Now we would like to uh, use a further. So now we would like to use a, a further, like a split. Um, that is, uh, this is, uh, so if we think about this, um, this is I is not J, but uh, if we include this I, so we'll have something like, so actually this is, sorry, this is Delta I and the Delta J. This is Delta I and Delta J. This is expectation with respect Delta I and Delta J. So this is expectation with respect to delta i and expectation with respect to delta j, and we write this the this sum as i from one to n, uh, j from one to n, uh, b minus one divided by n minus one delta i dot product with delta j. Um, this is like we add an extra diagonal. So we have to subtract the same thing from here. So this is plus one minus B minus one over M minus one sum of from one to N this square. Okay. This is just a constant. And now let's consider this part, okay, so this part is kind of interesting and uh, um, it's computed. So let, and then we plug in back. So delta i, delta j, um, the expectation is taken with respect to these. So if we consider the sum, So uh, again, we use this type of, uh, you know, split. So delta I first, sorry, delta J first, and we're taking the sum, like uh, the inner one dot product. So this is uh, the conditional probability formula. That is when we take the expectation of the inner variable, we keep the outer variable as something like a condition. It's like a fixed, okay. So when we take the expectation of this, we consider this I fixed. So this expectation is taken with respect to J. And this is like we sum, what does that mean? Is for each I, so then for each I, for each, fixed i, okay, we have the sum of, uh, so for each fixed i, we are summing up this sum. Uh, so we're computing. This, okay. And now we look back at um, the expression of, uh, where was it? <sighs> oh, here we go. Okay. So if we take expectation of this, okay. Now let's uh, memorize this formula. Uh, if we take expectation of this, it's gonna be So this is gonna be sum
And the inner one, so we have an inner one, this is gonna be sum. So let me use M from one to uh, capital N and gradient of uh, FM WK subtract gradient of F WK. We think about this. The first term, okay. The first term is nothing but the average gradient. The second term is average gradient does not change with respect to M, which means this is adding up M times then we, I'm sorry, capital N times and then we divide by N. So it's the same thing. And essentially this is average gradient subtract average gradient. So it's zero. And this it implies this term is zero, okay? I mean, because if, even if we take the inner expectation, we get zero, so uh, the whole thing must be zero. Okay, so yeah, let me put this zero here. So this is zero. And now we're back to the equation above, okay? This term becomes zero after we take the expectation. So the rest is just uh, this term. So we have, we have one final term left, which, which is the expectation of this term. So this is uh, um, B over N and uh, what else? So, expectation because here uh, we have taken expectation of this J now, uh, we, we are only left with this I. So, um, so we have only this Delta I and we have this uh, uh, one subtract B minus one divided by N minus one sum I from one to N Delta I square. Okay. And now we simplify a little bit more. Um, so this term is gonna be rewrited at n minus one, n minus one. And uh, so this term is essentially a little like uh, n minus b divided by n minus one. And we multiply it to the outside. But then we, at the same time, we we move this uh, um, we move this n inside, so so it becomes the expectation of uh, of something like an average. So this is b times n minus b divided by uh, b times n minus one expectation of delta i one over n i from one to n, delta i square. Here, if we write down, now if we write down uh, this explicitly, we get back to something, uh, we get back to something that uh, we learned in uh, SGD, that is, uh, um, m minus b divided by b, uh, divided by n minus one, um, the expectation. So with this delta i is essentially like the expectation with respect to i, which is the sampling. Okay, so this expectation is taken with respect to the sampling. And this is uh, i from one to n. We just write down what's the definition of uh, um, of our delta i, so we have this. So th this term is actually like a reminiscent, all right. Um, this term is reminiscent of why I'm saying this is because uh,
this is the M term in the analysis of SGD. Okay. So this whole analysis, the purpose is to bridge the result of mini batch uh, with our SGD. Uh, the reason is because um, so for the mini batch, we have this, uh, you know, like a um, sample versus sample. Um, for SGD, we only have like one sample. So we don't have to consider uh, the cross term right here. And the analysis is much easier. We just, uh, you know, compute. We just re rewrite this, uh, you know, this average as M. This is like, a, um, uh, this is like what? So this is like, a, um, the average square difference between our sample gradient and our overall like average gradient. So now let's do some more estimate that is, and moreover, so we have, so we have a little fact here that is M minus B, M minus one, okay. is less or equal to one, right? So we, we, we just choose batch size uh, greater than or equal to one. So the numerator is smaller and we have this and now we can just uh, make use of this fact. So we kind of put this to be one and then this becomes less than one over BM. Okay. And this actually tells us an astounding fact. If we look back so if we look back, uh, let me use this. Um, so yeah, right here. Okay. Um, if we look back in SGD, this is like alpha k times m square. Okay, so this is like alpha square uh, times m square. So that this this was the analysis in SGD. But however, in the analysis of mini batch, instead of uh, this is m, sorry. So it's alpha square times m, and instead of alpha square times m, now we have an extra one over b factor. So this is a difference. And I mean, it, it kind of um, conform with uh, our intuition. So this implies, um, so conclusion. So comparing with stochastic gradient descent. So the mini batch with batch size B, okay, um, reduces the error term. So reduces the M error term by a factor of B, okay. So if we, uh, if we just copy and paste, so let me copy and paste. So let's just copy and paste. Let me, and let me erase it. Um, so this whole term becomes M over B, all right? And as earlier, as earlier this term, the analysis is totally like a gradient descent and we have done. Um, And this extra term, what does this extra term contribute? So if we repeat, and so here I'm not gonna repeat. So repeat the analysis for SGD, we're gonna find, we're gonna find what? We're gonna find the limit of uh, 
k goes to infinity expectation of our best possible neural network, okay, is less than uh, alpha, so alpha k equals alpha, alpha times m divided by two mu uh, subtract alpha mu square b, all right. So the extra factor, this is the extra factor um, in the mini batch. Okay, so. Um, this, ad, this analysis actually covers SGD because if B is one, I mean, B, B is just one, okay? Um, but right now, if we have a batch size, as we can see, even though, even though both converges linearly, but uh, uh, this factor, I mean, um, so, so even though, so remark is, so for it, let, me, let me add the remark here. So for SGD, B is just one, okay? So we, we just repeat the analysis of SGD and we'll get this formula. And what happens is remark is, um, the convergence is still in terms of a noise ball. I mean, because this is expectation, it's like on average, it's less than something. Okay, it's not like a, so it's so our sample may be like a, you know at different locations. Sorry, not sample. Like our neural network is like around our best possible neural network, but if we choose mini batch, this noise ball is smaller. Okay, so in terms of noise ball, so and mini batch, uh, this noise ball is like smaller. All right, so this is a conclusion. And uh, um, I don't think I have time to go through uh, next topic. So next topic is, uh, so here we have our sneak peek. So next topic is about overfitting and validation. So uh, which is related to our uh, final project. Um, overfitting means if we uh, minimize our uh, like uh, loss function too much, our model has no generalizability. So we have to find a balance. It's like, uh, for example, we don't wanna train our model to achieve, for example, 99% uh, of accuracy. Instead we monitor using a validation strategy so that uh, the model has the best generalizability. And uh, uh, that, that is uh, somehow avoid overfitting. And, and we'll formally define this overfitting and introduce a validation strategy next class. So that's it for today, okay.